Hey, what's going on everyone? Chris Parker here and I've had a lot of requests for learning how to create shadows in GIMP. So check this out. This image probably looks familiar because we used it in last week's GIMP tutorial on how to remove the background in GIMP. I also created a shadow for our subject here, but I didn't tell you how I made that. So I did have a lot of requests asking how I did that. So you're going to learn how to create this shadow as well as creating a shadow for this subject here. So here is the original image and then my shadow, which you can see right down here. So you're going to learn how to create that one as well. And then if you want to apply this person on a new background or maybe just a white background, you can do that, but the problem is the shadow is not showing up here on the white background. But if I click on this layer, it shows up. So why is that? Well, let's find out. Let's go ahead and start with this image here first. And both of these images are located via links in the description below. The one thing we're not going to do is talk about how to remove the background or make a selection of the subject because I've already done that several times. Make sure to check out the playlist in the description below to learn how to remove backgrounds from your images. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off. And the first thing we want to do is once we've made that selection and we've created our layer mask to remove the background, what we want to do is right click on the layer mask and select mask to selection. And that's going to reselect your subject. Okay. So from here, we're going to create a new layer called drop shadow. Make sure it's filled with transparency. Click OK. And now we're going to fill it in with our bucket fill tool and the color for our shadow. So I'm going to go with black and I'm going to go ahead and click inside to fill it in. OK, I'm going to deselect with command or control shift plus D or go up to select and select none from here. All right, let's go ahead and move this layer below our other layer here. So it's behind her. And then we're going to grab our move tool with the letter M. Make sure in tool options here you have move the active layer selected and go ahead and move the shadow into position. Now, based on the original image here, I know where the drop shadow is supposed to go. But if you're not sure, look for shadows on your subject to determine the direction of the light. And we can see there's a shadow on this side of her face. And if you look in her glasses here, you can see a little highlight. This looks like a soft box to me, which is positioned over here on the right side. I think it's a little bit higher than her eyes here. It's probably right about here. And that's why the shadow is coming down at an angle. So left bottom here, left down. So we're going to put our drop shadow in that same position. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to blur out the edges because the edges of the shadow are too harsh right now. And what we want to do is we want to match the type of light or the quality of light. So with the soft box close like this, it's going to create a soft edge, which we see here. So we're going to go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're going to increase the size of the X and Y axis to right around 20 to 22. So I think I'm going to go with that right there. Now, the other thing you're going to notice on this original image here is the shadow here is being filled in with light and it's not really dark right here. It's actually pretty bright in this area. So if you want to create that effect, you're going to have to create a new layer with white and then add a linear gradient to slowly remove the shadow in those areas. Now you can keep it like this if you want. It just means that the position of the light is different and that she's also closer to the chalkboard. So it looks like she's closer to it right now. So let's go ahead and create that layer mask in white. We're going to grab our gradient tool. Make sure your foreground color is set to black. And then you want to select in your tool options here, foreground to background. We're going to start over here. I'm going to click and drag to the left. And I'm going to go down at an angle here a little bit to match the direction of the light as well. Now, once I get into her arm here, you will see that it's starting to disappear a little bit. So you can add or remove as much of that as you want. So I'm going to go right there. I'm going to click enter or return to apply that gradient. All right. So that one was pretty easy to do. This next one requires an extra step. 
So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my shadow here. And I'm going to go ahead and disable my layer mask here so we can get back to the original image. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing. Make a selection, remove the background. You're going to have this layer mask like this. And then we're going to right click and mask to selection again. And just like before, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to fill it in with black. Command or Control, Shift plus A. All right, now for the fun part, we're going to change the perspective of our shadow and move the position of it so it's in the bottom right of the image here, so on the floor. So we're going to use the Unified Transform tool to do that. And we're going to click on our shadow here to activate the Transform tool. You'll notice all these different shapes along the outline of your image here. And these are different nodes that can be used to change the shape or size or perspective of your shadow. So you'll notice in the corners here, we have two shapes. And when you hover over one of those, the outline will change from white to yellow. And if you select the square one, that will resize your shadow. And then if you hover on the inside, that will highlight the diamond. And that one will allow you to change the perspective of your shadow. So what we need to do is we need to flip her or change it 180 degrees. And to do that, we need to move this node and this one to the bottom and these two above it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move this one up to the top. She's gone. But once we get all the different nodes in their new positions, she will then be visible. Now we can't get to this one right now because this little panel right here is blocking access to that node. So if we click right here, we can detach it and move it over as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one now, pull it down, and there's our shadow. Now that it's upside down, we just need to change the perspective to fit inside of the floor here. And the perspective is going to be dependent on the direction of the light. So this looks like the main light source is from the windows here. And I don't see any other indication of any other lights like over here on the left. But we're going to pretend like we have another light source over here in the top left. And that's why I'm going to place the shadow over here in the bottom right. Now we just need to go ahead and move these nodes around until we get it into the position that we want and the perspective. This is probably the hardest part, trying to get the perspective and the size that you want to create a realistic drop shadow. So maybe something like that. I may want to adjust this a little bit, maybe move this one over as well. And I'm going to go ahead and make it just a little bit smaller. If you click on the inside, you can then move the position of that shadow as well. So originally, the first one I had, I think I had a little bit off the image here like so. But I'm going to go ahead and place it right here for now. All right. Once you're happy with your new shadow position, go ahead and click on Transform. All right. We have a shadow, but it's not looking much like a shadow yet. So let's go up to filters and let's go ahead and blur the edges of that shadow again. And I think I'm going to go a little bit less for this one. So right around seven, click OK. And we're still not quite there. Let's go ahead and drop the opacity down to right around 90 to 95. And then the last thing to blend this shadow into the floor so it looks a little bit more realistic is to change the blend mode from normal to overlay and boom, you now have your new shadow. How cool is that? I love it. I'm going to go ahead and drop the opacity down a little bit more so it's not as obvious. So maybe something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it back up so I can show you why it's not showing up on a white background here. So there's our white background and the shadow is now gone. Well, the reason why is because of the blending mode. So if you want to switch your background from the original image to a white background, you need to change your blend mode back to normal. And then I would probably drop the opacity down a little bit as well. All right. Now that you know how to create shadows in GIMP, make sure to check out those playlists right there to continue elevating your GIMP skills.